Hello and welcome to day two of Ready to be Known, my three-part webinar series to help you emerge from the shadows, impact and reap the rewards of getting media publicity. So day two is all about story generation and research, but using um, the tools I'm going to show you in a very intentional way. So you're going to be generating stories and generating uh, articles, press release, blog posts that people want to read about and that journalists are writing about. So I'm Sandra Coffey. I'm a former journalist with over 10 years experience and I now work as a PR trainer and I'm the author of two books um, in the PR area. So let's get started. Okay. The first thing I want you to do is we're going to look at some story prompts just to get your juices going, just to get like your creative hat on and just to start getting you to think about your business. So I always say start with yourself. Don't look outside initially. Start with you. So you can mine the story of your own business for ideas, your wins, your losses. And losses are particularly good for uh, media coverage because it shows how you overcome something. And look at your personal story. Do you have anything there that you feel could resonate with your audience? And of course, this feeds into personal branding. And if that is something that you are very interested in, keen to go down, then mining your personal story is where you are going to build a really strong personal brand that will connect with people and will play a huge role in building connections with journalists and will, will build your business also. Okay, I want you to ask, why are you doing media publicity? This can be time consuming. Many people are not going to tell you that. They think you just do a press release, blast it out to everyone and wait and see who's going to cover it. That's not what I do and that's certainly not what I recommend. But what I always ask you to do first is write down exactly why you want to do this. What are your goals for this? Personal, financial, for the team, for the overall business, because this is a journey. This isn't something you're going to be doing um, in the short term. This is a long game and you need to be um, patient in order to get results. OK, so some more story prompts. Now, um, in my book, Breaking into the Media, A Journalist's Guide to Publicity, I have a chapter called Generating Ideas. And in this chapter, I go very deep into how you can generate stories in your business. So this is a part of my uh, book um, here in this slide, and it goes into the when. So just focus on the when for now. Get your dates together and write them down. When did you start the business? The day, the month, the year. Get birthdays together of employees, collaborators and affiliates and see if they bring up any ideas. Type them into Google and see if those dates um, coincide with something really interesting that happens on that day. Do they fall on any particular time of year? Like, do you have an employee whose birthday is on Valentine's Day, for example, or who's on Chris or has a birthday on Christmas Day, got married on Stephen's Day? Look for particular interesting connections in your dates. And also look ahead. Are you celebrating anything special next year or in the next five years that you want to share with people? And start planning now for what you want to do. Um, I've mentioned Christmas and Valentine's Day or the first day of summer. This is always a really good time to um, send out content because during summer, journalists are looking for something different and something positive. Um, and did you set up your business um, in relation to any worldwide event that happened? Did anything on the world stage influence your um, setting up of the business or how you pivoted in your business, really look at your when and see does that spark ideas. Now, I have another one for you. Why? Why did you set up your company? In one to three lines, write down why you do what you do and what makes you special about what you do. 
did you see something in the market that needed to be changed and you wanted to be the one that changed it? Did something happen globally that caused you to set up a crash or a boom? Did you inherit the business? Now, I put this here because this can be really interesting. Um, look back at your family tree and see how the business was run 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, see what trends were in your niche back then that are still there now, but possibly in a different guise. Um, were there some interesting personalities in your family um, that worked in the business that you have now? Um, there's a really good and interesting thing that I always recommend people to do is to look at archival material in a local newspaper, a local magazine, and go there and see, let's go, say you go with your dates, you set up on a certain date, and you want to see the archive of a newspaper edition of that date. And start to see if you can pinpoint ideas for stories. And I guarantee you, once that paper lands in front of you, in the newspaper archives, you will have a lot of ideas. Okay, as I've said in other videos, I want to keep these trainings short and snappy because I want you to walk away with things that you can do right now. Okay, so we've looked at some story prompts and I have a lot more of those in, in my book, which I will link to below in this video. But when you are setting out to generate stories, you shouldn't be generating a press release in a vacuum and just talking about what you are doing and what you want to sell, what product you want to promote. Yes, that will be included in the content, but you need to make it relatable to what people are doing right now. So this is a five step story generation plan that I want to walk you through. And top of mind with this is keywords and phrases. So what I first want you to do is do some social listening in your area. Do this on Twitter, do this on LinkedIn, do this on a platform that you are comfortable with and that you are active on. Start to listen about what topics are being um, talked about in your area and what journalists are posting about them and what keywords come up time and time again in your area and take note of them take note of topics take note of keywords and particularly take note of any phrases that start to come up again and again and then i want you to take this information in particular keywords and keywords as well that your competitors are are using in their content which is also something i'm going to talk about in a minute and pop these in to google and look for things um, on the search engine uh, results page, things like search volume, keywords that are popular, competition, like what are your competitors ranking for on Google? Pick three to four competitors and see what content they're writing about. And also when you pop this information into Google, you will see, well, who's ranking on the first page on Google and what kind of stuff they're talking about right now in your area and this will feed in to what kind of guest posts you're going to write about finding your unique angle in this um in the content from media interviews like this will all feed into planning out a visibility strategy that's actually going to get you visible as opposed to uh, a press release that you will send out in the hope that it will get covered so you need to feed your press release, feed your pitch emails, your blog posts with keywords and phrases that people actually want to learn about. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but if you start to type in stuff into Google, Google will actually start to fill it the rest of it for you. Also take note of what it fills in and pop that into your file along with things like um, search volume, keywords, competition, etc. Also two other tools that you can use. Google Trends is amazing. If you pop Google Trends um, up on your uh, laptop and type in the keyword that you've got from your social listening and the Google SERP 
and see when is that keyword really popular. And you can pop it in for the whole year and see right across the whole year when it's popular, when it dips, when it's completely irrelevant and when it peaks again. And this is really important information for you to know when you're planning out a content strategy. You know that people are searching for a certain keyword at a certain time. We need to plan to have our content out there, whether it's in a press release, a guest blog, um, a pitch email or have our spokesperson talk about this. But we need to get this content up and ready to go a number of weeks before this trend peaks. And with all of this information, this is how you're going to generate stories and angles. And also this information will be hugely useful when you put together the story prompts that I've given you earlier and all of this together. I know it's a lot of information, but you will be able to put together a story generation plan. That you'll never run out of ideas because you will always be updating um, what people are looking for. And once you start to do this, you will start to see trends and you'll start to see what people are really, really interested in learning about. OK. So planning content around timely events. Now, I've talked a little bit about this. Plan a keyword strategy around times of year when people are most likely going to be searching. Now, you can use Google Trends for this. You can um, use a content calendar for this if you have one. Um, you can use lots of tools that are available to help you plan a keyword strategy. And I'm talking about keyword strategy in your content. I'm not talking about ads in this. I'm not talking about ads in this series at all. That will be something I will talk about in um, another series. But right now, you need to plan a keyword strategy in your content, in your press release in particular, that you will be sending to the media. Because once they publish your press release, publish content from your press release, and they publish the keywords that are in there, this gives huge authority to your piece. And when you link that back to your site, those links are hugely, um, huge authoritative uh, authority links that you are trying to build. And this will also feed in to ranking higher on Google and having more people find you. So you get the keywords working for you. As I say, get your spokesperson to talk about a certain keyword that um, you want them to talk about in interviews. Use it in your press release. Use it in your communications with collaborators, affiliates. But I need to, um, to caution you here because don't keyword stuff. Google, Amazon, all major search engines, they will penalize you for keyword stuffing. So you need to make your content still sound like a human because a journalist will instantly know that you are keyword stuffing when they read your press release and it's just full of keywords. Mm -hmm. Remember, they write in this area, so they know the keywords that are dominant right now, the keyword phrases and what people are talking about. So if they see a lot of that in your content, they know that you're keyword stuffing. So you need to make it sound like a human. And Try to use different iterations of keyword phrases, you know, and test test stuff. Send one one press release to one journalist and send a different version of it to another and see which one starts to get attention. Also use use this in your pitch email strategy. And I want you to get to be known for a particular thing and not a topic. And I'm going to go into this more in tomorrow's training when I help you find your unique angle in your story. Because you're going to have all this information and there will be others doing similar things, possibly not in the same way as I'm teaching you here, but they will also be trying to rank for certain keywords. But I want you to be known for a particular thing that you do and not a broad topic. And this is really important because this is what's going to make you more interesting to a journalist if you have a particular angle on a story or on a topic. But I don't want you to be known for a topic, 
because that is not how you're going to get the interest of journalists. They want you to narrow down your focus and become um, an expert in a particular thing. I hope that makes sense. I'm happy to answer questions in the comments if it doesn't. Now, I've talked about a lot of stuff here and I hope you found it useful. Rewatch it again if you need to um, figure out some things that maybe you missed in the first uh, in the first listen. Um, and also, if you are looking for a content planner, a content calendar, I have a little surprise. Yay! Um, for Black Friday, I am offering my latest book, The Effective PR Planner, for a specially reduced price. So. I want to tell you a little bit about this and how this can help you plan a strategy, plan story generation, and start getting you to think more strategically about your PR. So this is a one-year planner that I have um, created for 2022. And in it, it includes a lot of stuff. This is not a planner that is blank and that you fill in stuff yourself. This is a guided planner that has a lot of guidance and advice from me. So it's a monthly organizer also, so you can organize yourself, like organize media stories and promotions, blog content, etc. But what makes this planner unique in my view, and I know I'm biased, but it's, as I say, it's not a blank planner. I have nothing wrong with them. I have no problems with them. I use them myself. But for you to do PR effectively, I believe having a planner that offers you guidance month by month and space to chat, chart your goals and write down notes, record activity, I feel is hugely important. And I've created this because I feel there is a massive need for this. So included in this planner is monthly PR and marketing advice, monthly story ideas, original and motivational quotes that are designed to get you creative and they are timed for each particular month. And some of them I feel are hugely inspirational and they will certainly get you going. And as I say, there's plenty of space to chart goals and keep track of all your timelines. So it was 1999 uh, pounds. It's now 50.99. 1899 euro or 2099 USD. And I'm going to put the link to the planner below. And when you go to the Amazon link, you will see what's inside. You will get a much more um, detail about how this planner will help you to do effective PR. Okay, that's it for today's training. I hope this has been hugely valuable to you. Post um, in the comments below, share this with somebody that you think might find it useful and subscribe to my channel. All of this really helps me make more content and help more people. OK, until tomorrow for day three of Ready to be Known three part webinar series. Bye bye.